Welcome to our CyberWise Chats, where we talk about the challenges of raising and teaching digital kids. I'm Diana Graber, author of Raising Humans in a Digital World and founder of CyberWise and CyberCivics. Join every episode with Dr. Pamela Rutledge, who's the director of the Media Psychology Research Center. Our always lively conversations tackle topics like cyberbullying, screen time, TikTok, and everything in between. We've got some great guests and promise each chat will give you the tips, tricks, and confidence you need to help kids use technology. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us today for our CyberWise chat, whether you're here on the live webinar or joining us or listening via the podcast. Um, I'm Diana Graber, founder of uh, CyberCivics and CyberWise. And author, I forgot who I was. And I'm <laughs> the digital world, it's been one of those weeks. Here's all. <laughs> Pamela Rutledge, who is the director of the Media Psychology Research Center. And today we're going to chat about how to protect your child from cyberbullying. And Pam, correct me if I'm wrong, but we've done so many of these chats, but we have not really ever addressed cyberbullying as its own topic. Am, am I right about that? No, I don't think that we have. And we certainly haven't ever had a guest um, as uh, effective at, at dealing with all this as, as Ross Ellis. So um, I'm really thrilled to hear what you're doing. And you know, it was it was interesting because of this, I ended up doing a much deeper dive into the literature, the, the academic literature than I had done before. Uh, so that was uh, that was sort of eye opening and um, fun might not be the right word with academic literature. Yeah. And that's what I, what I really appreciate having you here, Pam, is you can always point us to the research instead of just talking off our heads about a topic. We, we really <laughs> what says about it. So we'll do a lot of that today. Um, all right. So without further ado, welcome, Ross. Uh, so please, lucky to have you here, especially at the start of which, which is um, October, which is um, Bullying Prevention Month or Awareness Month. Um, for those of you who don't know Ross, you should. She is the founder and CEO of Stomp Out Bullying, which is the leading national nonprofit dedicated to changing the culture for all students. So, Ross, you can do a much better job than I can telling us about <laughs> bullying and the important work that you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. Well, first we started out just as an anti-bullying and cyberbullying organization. And then everything started happening. Excuse me. I need a sip of water. And um, while, while Ross is taking a sip of water, I just want to say that I will be checking the chat box and the question box. If anyone here has any questions, I'll, I will try to address them. Thank you. All right, Ross, sorry. That's okay. <laughs> sorry. Um, so we started with that and with the cyberbullying and bullying, it was really big and it still is, but there are so many things happening in the world, hatred, racism, homophobia, LGBTQ discrimination. So we really started adopting all those things too. It's very important because you just can't hate people for who they are, or what they are. Right. You know, people are people. And so what they whether it's a choice or they were born that way or whatever it is, accept them, you know, as you have to. So we do that and we believe in diversity, inclusion, equity, and equality. Um, very important. And I've seen a lot of things happening in the news lately that um, tend to, to point towards LGBTQ. And it's very, very upsetting. It also points to Asians, hatred against Asians. And that is absolutely horrible. Um, we can't hate anybody, no matter who or what they are. Pamela, so Ross, what inspired you to what inspired you to to start the organization? Did you just well, like wake I, up one day and say, I'm gonna start a it's funny. I had started um a child abuse prevention organization. And people didn't want to hear it about child abuse. They just didn't want to hear it. And suddenly we started getting calls for bullying and cyberbullying, which cyberbullying didn't have a name then. And I started calling people I knew um, and learning. And in 2005, Stomp Out Bullying was born. And we're going to be 17 this month, at the end of this hey, month. Congratulations. Thank you. So, Ross, Thank you have you. some really cool initiatives happening that I think people don't know about. I'm going to step in and talk about one because I, I put them in one of our videos and I need to send that to you so you can see it, but your helpline, like what do kids, there's no place for kids to go in the middle of the night if they're being harassed or bullied. And so one awesome thing, as long as, 
as long as they're 13 and over, because it's a COPA law, um, they can go click on the chat line and speak to our counselor. They can chat with them and get help. Um, we've saved so many lives on that line. It's incredible. I get the chills thinking about it. But it's it's exciting to know that we can help the kids. So and, before and so I forget, Ross, can you give uh, the, the place that people go to find that helpline? It's right at the top of our website, stompoutbullying.org. Great. And, and that's uh, so important because kids might not know where to call for bullying. They might not think, well, mm -hmm. I can't call a suicide hotline because I'm not suicidal. I just have this other problem that is, you know, obviously really right. important. So it's such an, uh, a big need. It really is. And then your wellness rooms. Can you talk about that? Because that's another incredible initiative. That's brand new. We the inaugural school opens up um, on the tw the twelfth of this month. We went to a school at the Longwood Preparatory Academy, and we they had an empty room, looked like a little closet. We went and painted it and got furniture and all kinds of stuff. And so, it's not only for kids who are being bullied and they're stressed out by it, but it's also for kids who have mental health issues which is so important because if you, you have these issues, there are times in the day that you're going to feel like you need to decompress. Maybe you're sitting in class and suddenly it's way too much for you at that moment. You'll have a place to go to, to go into that room, the wellness room, and just decompress. And it's great. We give them materials to use. Um, we also got um, a little star machine. If you turn it on, the, the ceiling lights up with stars. So it just takes the, the every day to do away. And I, I think the kids will be really happy with it. And so who funds this? We do. Wow. I mean, that's incredible. Although, although next, we're, the next school will be in New Jersey. And we are partnering with the New York Jets and one of their players, uh, Solomon Thomas. Um, he unfortunately lost his brother to suicide. And so the three of us will be paying for this, the Jersey school room. That is awesome. And and for those of you who don't know, I, I learned this because I was lucky enough to come visit Ross and, and speak at a New York Jets event, but they love her. <laughs> They're such big supporters of you and your initiative. And I think They're great. That, that is so awesome. It's such a great way yeah. to use their influence and their popularity. So mm -hmm. we've cool. been partnering with them for nine years now. Awesome. And I couldn't ask for a better partner. So oh, great. So we're very, very lucky, lucky, lucky. Yeah. So I have a couple questions. Either of you can answer this, but have incidences of cyberbullying increased in recent years? Yes. Uh, do you know the numbers? I don't have the exact number. I um actually went to a friend of ours and um they surveyed kids uh in I think it was the fifth to tenth grade. And it said that it's it's involved more than thirty thousand students. That's a lot. Yeah. Um, I know that during COVID, uh, the research showed that it really fell off. You know, because it did. Cyberbullying is really related to in-person bullying. It's often the same mm -hmm. traders and the same targets. So when mm -hmm. you're gathering in the classrooms, that behavior kind of fell off the map. Uh, it's it did. Kids are back, but it's back and it's higher. Yeah. So which is a shame. Now, talk a little bit about the psychological impacts to a child that's being bullied. Well, yeah, I think parents need to, first of all, realize there's different kinds of bullying. There's physical bullying that we were just talking about in the school. And that's obviously the easiest kind to spot if somebody's, you know, hitting someone or dumping them in the trash can. But there's also a psychological bullying where you're calling people names or you're harassing them. And that's where you see a lot of the offline bullying, in-person bullying moved to cyberbullying. And the psychological implications of cyberbullying are much greater because it's relentless. It never stops. A kid can go home from school and avoid a bully. They can't go home and avoid the internet without some knowledge and skills and help. So it's it's really important to recognize bullying and then to understand that long-term bullying is really a stress condition, that you are actually impacting the way the brain functions and the way the body functions. So there's all kinds of physiological implications of bullying that, that we might not give much credence to, especially if it's the sort of mean girls, people calling names and excluding each other, but very painful and very profound effects. 
Yeah. And, exactly. And I would like to just talk vocabulary here for a moment because I've been teaching, you know, cyber civics forever now and cyberbullying is such a big unit in our first level of the program. And it's often confused with digital drama. And that, that bums me out because digital drama is really just the common arguments and tips that kids have had right. that move on. Right. Like, very yeah, different this... cyberbullying. Cyberbullying, it's intentional. It's harmful. It's repeated. It's online. Mm -hmm. And I, I just want parents to be super clear. Uh, a lot of times I see adults jump to the conclusion, my kid's being cyberbullied. And it's like, no, actually, it doesn't meet that criteria. It's still hurtful to the target. But let's, you know, cyberbullying is a very serious situation. Would you agree with that? Ross? It's true. It's true. And parents need to understand it. And parents never ask your kids if they're being cyberbullied because you're going to get a one more answer and they're going to say no and walk away. However, what I would recommend to you is tell, tell your kid, you know, I've been hearing so much in the news about cyberbullying. Does it happen in your school? Do you know anyone it's happening to? Know that if it ever happened to you, that I love you and that I will help you. I'll do everything I can to help you, but I would need to know what's going on. And if it should happen, never ever respond to any negative post. Because yeah, it's like putting... That's such an important point, Ross, because the whole the whole power that a bully derives from bullying, whether it's online or offline, is your reaction. And so helping a kid understand that it's not about them, that it's a problem that the bully's having, and whether the bully's using it to be part of the in-group, or they're using it because they feel powerless, or they've been bullied themselves, or they've, you know, they can't control their behavior, it doesn't matter. It's not about the target. And so just... Exactly giving them skills so that they don't show it if it bothers them. And then they yeah. have methods like your wellness room of sort of decompressing to get rid of that negative emotion without sort of rewarding the bully. Exactly. And, you know, I mean, if you, if you respond to something that is negative, it's just going to go back and forth, back and forth. If you don't respond, delete the post and block them out. That's the best thing you can do. We have, we created National Block It Out Day. It's every year, it's November 14th. And we tell kids to pass it on. You block it out, but also have your friends and family block it out. We reached 4 million people last year. I mean, that's awesome. You know, it's, yeah, it's really great. Um, the biggest thing is, okay, you're hurt because you see this post. Just do not react. Do not respond. Right. You know, that's the biggest thing I've learned teaching cyberbullying is kids really do not know what to do. Like we right. do not help them at all. I, I, I'm always shocked at that. In fact, today, I'm going to pick it up and show you. I, at the end of, you know, teaching level one last year, I had kids fill out these surveys. I got 90 of them right here. And I asked them, <laughs> what's the most valuable thing you learned this year? And they said, what to do when I see cyberbullying? And it occurred to me, <laughs> like, these kids are never told there's so many things that they can do. Like they should. Right strategies like you talked about if they're being bullied you mm -hmm. know block the person stop the communication talk to a parent or friend easy if they see someone else being bullied online or off be an upstander Kim when I just talked about this that doesn't mean you have to confront the target you can't right. not the most effective strategy you can give support to the target you can report it and let's mm -hmm. talk about reporting for a minute because I see that someone put this well one second though before reporting it because it should be reported to your internet service provider to your to your school and to your parents but if the negative post is something really horrible before you you uh delete the post print it out and give it to your parents so they can bring it to the law enforcement and they can bring it to the ISP more than likely, law enforcement won't do anything because they're kids. Um, but at least it'll be a record to show yeah. that this happened. Yeah. Schools need desperately to accept that if their student population is anyone there is cyberbullying, they need to know about it. So a lot of schools will say it's not happening on campus, but they're still their students. Yeah. And so the students need to know that it's not acceptable. Yeah. Um, reporting it is primary it really is and um don't let the kids see that you know let's say johnny is doing it and you know you block johnny you see johnny in the hallway at school 
hi, Johnny, or whatever, just walk past him. Don't do anything. Yeah. Because it's really important that you know that Johnny knows you're not bothered by it. Yeah. And just one comment there, what I tell the kids, because they don't often have access to a printer, every kid in the world knows how to screenshot. It's like, <laughs> so if they, if there's a mean comment or something like that, screenshot it and just keep it as evidence for later. Right. Record it to tell a parent. It's just good mm -hmm. that before you block the person. Exactly. So that's exactly because you have the proof. Yeah. So it's important. And I think what you're, what you're both doing is so important because so many parents at one, it was just like rushing and fix it. And what you really want to do, you can't be there every time your kid has a problem. So what you really want to do is give them skills and strategies so that they know how to deal with these different situations. It does two things. One, it gives them skills and strategies so they know what to do. But second, more importantly, it builds their self-confidence, which makes them more resilient, which means they are much less likely to be bothered by a bully psychologically mm -hmm. and much more able to sort of just turn the other way. Yeah. I want to talk That's about absolutely true. Here. and Ross, you and I talked about this earlier in the week. I want to talk about age. Yeah. Let's talk, oh, about, gosh. Well, let's let's talk uh, about young age, not old age. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> just, okay. We'll stay, we'll stay um, in the context of kids here, but I'm talking about work well when kids are like 12, 13, 14, and they start using right. Or younger. Yeah. But in order to legally sign on to Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, any of those sites, you must be 13. Kids know that. They do know that. But they sign on anyway. And a lot of parents sign on for them. I had a friend who her daughter was, I think, nine. And her daughter was, I said, I saw Lily on Facebook. I said, what is she doing there? Well, all her friends are there. So does it mean if all her friends jump off a roof, I'm sounding like my mother, but if all her friends jump off a roof, is Lily going to do that too? I mean, the legal age is 13. You cannot be younger. And truly, kids are not, younger kids are not mature enough to handle the things that go online at, yeah. at a younger age. Definitely, I would say it's definitely harder to teach the younger kids these strategies because... Very hard. It, it's just there's a lot of... Um, you know, a lot of thought that needs to go into how to deal mm -hmm. with it. Like, mm -hmm. child, they're going to respond because they see the world more in black and white. They're not going to think through kind of the steps of their actions. Would you agree with that? Right. Yeah, definitely. And I think it's, but I think you, it's also important just because they're younger than that legal age. First of all, all they have to do is do the math and yeah. figure out what birth year to put in the whole, you know, in the, right. in the frame to get, to get an account. Um, but having conversations, not as sophisticated as you would with a 13 or 14 year old, but talking to them about the values that, you know, what does it mean to be kind? What is it? You know, because it's very difficult with a young child. And then you've got celebrities with their kids with mm -hmm. Instagram accounts and TikTok accounts. And so why is it OK for them and not for me? Puts you right. in as a parent in a very difficult situation. So that's one where you say, well, what are the things you think you would need to know to be able to do that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's one of the exactly. things that the classroom is really have the kids together, read the terms of agreement of these things they want to sign up for. You know, it's a vocabulary lesson, so they know the words in there. Correct. But things they'll learn on their own with their peers is that age limit, why it's there. And also that you are agreeing to use it in a respectful way. And if you violate those terms, here's what happens to you and here's how to report it. Like just having, you know, like and you learn ride, drive a car or ride a bike. You want to know how it works. And so I know parents are busy, but if they could spend a few minutes before a kid's going to spend hours on TikTok, spend a few minutes reading their terms of agreement so you both know what they're getting into. But even, even if they read the terms of agreement, it's important to do that. But it's also important to know, besides the unkind things that people say, you've got predators on there. And that's really dangerous. So someone under 13 will not know how to handle that. Am I right, Pamela? Oh, absolutely. And I think that probably a, a, a more dangerous and broad issue online is social exclusion. So it's one thing to call people names 
And it's another to try and exclude them from their social group, especially at a time, middle school especially, when kids most are interested in trying to figure out who they are and how they connect socially. So that's a very difficult one for parents to right. see because there's no name calling involved. It's like you're not invited to this. You aren't, you know, so you're really being cut out of the social world. And that's where I would say to parents, always watch for big behavior changes. If a very active kid becomes very passive. If the homework tanks, if something's going on, it might not have anything to do with bullying, but there is a problem and it might, especially in the middle school. We just had our first instance of middle school bullying with mean girls. So, you know, and it's, and it's subtle. It isn't, you know, it doesn't involve fists, but it's social. I mean, everyone should know that social exclusion triggers the same physiological response as physical pain and has the same long-term implications as physical damage. So this is a good time to ask you to address this question that came in. It's, it's long, but I'll read the last part of it. Um, yes, it is really difficult to communicate with our teenage kids and their mood swings besides their social emotional issues. So how do you bring this up with teenagers? What signs do you look for? How do you deal with this with a kid who's not gonna really wanna talk to you? Well, again, don't ask them if they're being cyberbullied. That's number one. If bullied or cyberbullied, because they're, they're just going to shut down and say no. Um, if you see the signs, I mean, I don't know, Pamela, would you like to address them or I could, whatever. I think coming from a psychologist is better. Um, yeah, I was, I mean, there are, there are signs, just like I was saying, sudden behavior stuff, but I always like the idea of taking a news story and using that as a teaching moment. You know, yes. oh, look what I saw in the news. Here's how I feel about that. That really scares me. What do you think about that? What would you do if that happens? So that you've mm -hmm. externalized it and you've given them some safe space to talk about it. But it's really, I mean, it's very hard to tell a teenage mood swings um, and <laughs> normal development from, from distress. That's one of the reasons why you need to have a conversation early and often not about stressful right. things, to build trust so that when there is a problem, there's an open avenue mm -hmm. and that you mm -hmm. can, they'll know you'll listen. Yeah, you know, I, love, not just the, once. I love the idea of the news yeah, stories. Just and, just once. I'm sorry, Ross, go ahead. No, I was just saying, don't have the conversation just once. Right. You have to have it often because they're going to shut it off in their minds. But um, I was going to say, I love the idea of the news stories. And that's what I do often in the classroom. And I, and I tell the other teachers to do it too, because there is always going to be a news story that correlates with whatever you're going to teach that day. I tell you, it's easy. Right. <laughs> Cyberbullying, you know, <laughs> when we do that unit, you know, one of the questions I ask the kids is like, has anyone here ever observed have been cyberbullying? Every hand goes up. Every kid's got a story. Of course. Whether they tell their parents or not, they'll certainly tell each other. And so mm -hmm. then power of addressing this in the classroom in the lesson right. is that kids will share with each other. They will understand what they're all going through. They will learn to support each other. Most importantly, empathy building. Kids realize that kids are kids. They make mistakes. A cyber right. bully is not a cyber bully forever. Maybe that person had a bad day or felt terrible or was like misused their words. And mm -hmm. the most powerful things I have observed happening in classroom is kids saying to each other, hey, we forgive you. We know you made a mistake. That is huge. And that doesn't happen in the context of a parent talking to a kid. You know, you've got to address these things holistically. It's part of a big picture of digital literacy. So, boy. It is. Schools it's aren't huge. They make a big mistake. So, how, yeah. Ross, how should they I mean, but then there's the, always the one, the negative post that's really, really bad because so many kids, and it's just, slays me will go especially mean girls um they will turn around and say go kill yourself please if anyone says go kill i would laugh if someone told me to go kill myself because who are they i don't think kids realize that that's so incredibly mean and wrong to say and there have been kids who do, who have taken their lives because someone said go kill yourself <laughs> It's online, you know, they, they do it mostly online. They don't do it as much in person, but it's very important that the kids understand just because this person doesn't know what they're talking about. So Ross, yeah. how do you tell schools to deal with this? 
the schools always say it's not happening on our campus, so we don't have to deal with it. But they're still their students, so they do have to deal with it. And we tell them, you know, have um, print out, I think, and we talked about this too the other day, assemblies don't really work. They're like band-aids. Um, but you can hand out flyers. You can do an announcement during the school day. Uh, do different things where kids know that this is not acceptable. And, it's, and it's not, it will not be tolerated at school. And if it happens at this school, there will be consequences. Yeah. And I, I want to underscore what you just said about assemblies don't work. If you're a parent or a school listening and you're going to try to hire an expert to come talk to kids for one hour, please do not waste your time or money. Or money. It doesn't work. It's a big context. And I, 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 Pam has some research to support that. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, unfortunately, the numbers aren't very good. And, and, Bullying is unfortunately a universal behavior across cultures and species. And we are just in a place now in society, one hopes, where there really isn't the benefit of bullying or dominance or aggressive behavior that there would have been if you were an orangutan. So it's important to make that distinction so that people aren't shamed, whether they're the, the target or the bully. So because very likely a child who is bullying is also suffering from some kind of mental distress. Mm -hmm. So it's important to not blame anyone and it's important to not disempower anyone. So don't rush in, don't call somebody a victim, don't give them a victim mentality, give them strength, build their strengths. And you know, and I think that's that's such a great example, Ross, about the go kill yourself. If I were a parent dealing with this, or I am a parent, I don't know why I say if I were a parent, I'm a parent a lot of times over. Um, <laughs> my children's hear this, I'll be in big trouble, um, is that you use that as an example. Oh my God, look what I saw today. Can you, what would, it, you know, can you imagine what that person feels like? Who would do this? So that you, they start thinking about this from multiple perspectives. Perspective taking is probably the best defense against taking something personally. Mm -hmm. I agree. Totally. I uh, honestly, if it, I, I mean, no one ever said that to me when I was a teenager, but if they had, I know I would have just laughed in their faces because who are they to tell me that? You know, it's like I said to some kids, I was talking at a school with the Jets and um, we, I said to a kid, who doesn't like my sweater? Raise your hand. And a couple of hands went up. I said, OK, I'm asking you now. But if I don't ask you if you like my sweater and you turn around and say to me, boy, that's one ugly sweater. I didn't ask you. So the, the kids have need to understand if someone says something, did you ask them their opinion or are they just saying it and being mean like the typical mean girls do? And that's important to recognize as well. Yeah. And I think, again, let's go back to this idea of a holistic education because none of this happens in a silo. And right. one of the things I love is like working up to cyberbullying and having kids say mm -hmm. that stay online, stays online forever. It matters. People judge you by your words, like understanding right. that first. And so, you know, when you get to cyberbullying, a kid's going to think twice before like writing, go kill yourself or whatever, because they know that does not look great <laughs> on your own social media. It reflects back to your digital reputation. So again, it's part of a context, like kids need to be taken through these steps again and again and again, and revisited and talked about amongst their peers. You know, it and just makes a big difference. And yeah, I would argue not that, that. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I was just going to say, I would argue that parents need to be a little bit aware of their own behavior. You know, we talk about this a lot with device use, you know, lead by example. And we were just mm -hmm. chatting about some of the uh, terrible conversations that go on on the app next door with, right. you know, presumably grown ups are saying these horrible things to each other, which would make a classic textbook case on how to not bully. Um, and so be aware of how you talk in front of your children, to your children, to your spouse, to the people that you have dealings with, because you are probably the most important influence in their lives, believe it or not, whether or not they admit it. Yeah. So Ross, exactly. here's a question for you that just came through. I've heard the words mean girls a few times. Is that just a general term that also includes boys as they can be mean too? Boys can be mean very differently. When girls get together and there's a little clique, maybe there's five of them or six of them, whatever, 
and they they gang up on one person. That's what we call Mean Girls. Though there's movies been done done about it, and a Broadway show, and it was so to the point. Um, usually, kids won't bully in a group, but the Mean Girls do. Mean Girls generally don't do it alone. Um, it's it's just it's important to know about it. It really is. Yeah, it's 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 an it's a social ordering. People use bullying to define who's in and who's uh -huh. out. And generally speaking, whoever the queen bee of the mean girls or mean boys, boys tend to be more physical, so it isn't quite such relational aggression as it is some relational and some sort of you know fisticuffs. But what they're really after is be making sure they're in and you're out and. You, they can't have an in-group if they don't have an out-group. So so they're making that line. And the meaner they, the closer they are to the edge, the meaner they are. So it isn't just girls. It got the name because of that Tina Fey movie the, right. back in right. the day with Lindsay Lohan. But it really is that dynamic of trying to create a cohesive group around popularity at a time when kids don't have much maturity. So they aren't making particularly good choices in how to achieve that. So to the question is, no, it's not just girls. Lots of people engage in relational aggression right in the office place, right, you know, mm -hmm. right, you know, I mean, all over the place. And it's, um, it's a very maladaptive approach to interpersonal relationships, she says, sounding like a psychologist. <laughs> Um, so I wanted to make a point just about boys really quickly, and it's something we don't have time to go deeply into, but I think we should have a chat about it. So um, online hate speech is actually more predominant these days than cyberbullying, believe it or not. It's very, very, it's happening out there. And what I've learned working with, you know, kids of both sexes is for the boys, that online hate speech happens a lot in online gaming. It's sort of natural for them to like use that kind of words to each other. So I've talked to boys about that, how they could be an upstander in that situation. And nearly every boy says, well, you'd never do that because then all of a sudden they're going to come after you. But what you can do is if it's a friend, you talk to them offline. One kid did something kind of nice, which I thought he sent a, uh, a message to a boy that was being, you know, hate speech directed at him saying, hey, you might want to go play with people, you know, instead of with strangers, you know, just there's other ways to reach out to kids. But the point I wanted to make is online hate speech is also very rampant. I think for boys, mm -hmm. it is very rampant. Happens more in gaming. Let's not stuff. forget something that we haven't said, talked about. When people, when kids post negative things online, and it stays online because what goes online never comes down, um, except when you delete it and block it. But if you're applying for a school, two kids got accepted to Harvard. And then Harvard saw the posts online. They were sent letters. You may not come to Harvard. If you apply for a job, the, the HR people look at your social media. Colleges look at your social media. So to even put all those negative things online is going to hurt you anyway. Yeah. Which so is it's not the smartest move. The whole context of digital literacy. It's not just right. Cyberbullying. It's about your digital reputation. It's about, you know, misinformation. All the things are part of mm -hmm. that education. That's right. I mean, parents need to really raise responsible digital citizens. And often it's critical. You just don't hand a kid a, a $2,000 phone and say, here, go have fun. Yeah. Yeah. So we are pretty much near the end of our time. And we always like to end these things with a big takeaway. Um, Ross, I'll start with you. What would be your biggest takeaway for parents? For me, the biggest takeaway is, is what I just said, raise responsible digital citizens. That's the best thing you can do for your child and for anyone else. Just keep on talking about it. Learn about it if you don't know it, but, but raise them to be responsible. Yeah, I would say that's, that would be my takeaway too, is to look for the uh, teaching a child the best way for them to deal with the problem so that they feel empowered. And we have a terrible habit in our culture of blaming the victim. Help the child see they are a target, they are not a victim, so that they are not, so they don't feel weak and powerless. And mm -hmm. you, because you actually want them to feel competent and be able to take action. Very good point. Um, I think I'm going to use 
a story for my takeaway because it's a story that I just remembered that happened so long ago, but it, it goes to cyberbullying. And I remember I was teaching a class and a girl asked to speak to me privately outside of the classroom. And she says, Mrs. Graber, I've been cyberbullied. And I'm like, I'm so sorry. And she says, but I took your advice and I took a screenshot of the evidence. And I'm like, okay, well, show me the evidence. And it was like, the screenshot was a, it was like Instagram or something. And it was, you know, her name is, and it was three flames, which basically is hot, 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 you know? And in my head, I'm thinking, I wish someone would call me hot. You know? <laughs> yeah, they don't understand. They do I, not understand it. No, I had to keep oh, quiet. These and then, cause problems. Yeah. So the second part of the story is the boy who posted that came to me privately later and said, I'm so sorry I did that. Um, I have a crush on her and I had no way else to express it. So miscommunication online, which brings me to my last point, And it was something that a child wrote in that survey. And it is right here. Um, what do you wish parents knew? That kids will be kids and no one is perfect and will make mistakes, but we have to learn from them. So, mm -hmm. you know, my example is just one of the many mistakes, misinterpretations that will happen amongst kids. They need to learn right. from their parents, their teachers, their peers. It's part of being a kid in today's digital world. Not an easy world, but they have to know yeah. what to do. Yeah, exactly. So Ross, thank you so, so much. Thank um, you for having me. Your, your work is valuable. You are thank a you. blessing to have in the world. So keep at it. Anything we can do to support you. I am going to send you a lesson and some stuff you can put on your website. Please. Whoever you want. Yes, we will definitely do that. Yeah. And for those of you who are here, thank you for your time. Um, you'll be getting a follow-up email with some resources that hopefully will help you as well. And um, okay, real quick, our next chat, we're kind of excited about. Um, we are going to be talking with Epic Games. You probably know of them. They are the makers of Fortnite. That will be at noon on November 28th. The title is what Epic Games wants you to know about keeping your kids safe online. So gaming, that goes hand in hand with cyberbullying sometimes. All right, Ross, thanks again. Thank you, Pam. And Thank we will you. talk later. Bye. Bye, you guys. Your great work.